me. <laughs> Pregnant ladies and little kids better get the hell out of the way because I am running. I'm just, I'm like Forrest Gump, dude. I am running. So, the Titanic was the biggest ship on the ocean, but that didn't mean it was unsinkable. <laughs> I want you to use ombudsman in a sentence next week. I got one for you. My name is Kevin, the official ombudsman. <laughs> you like apples? All right, here we are. Another edition of the JPP Pod, a special July Fourth <laughs> week special. And we're recording this a little early so we can get it out to you, get uh, have you something to listen to while you're maybe driving to July 4th or... And or maybe driving away. Let's not put too yeah. much pressure on the end. Yeah, at some right. point, at right. some point, this will be out. And either way, July Fourth, right around the corner, we're going to do some fun July Fourth stuff. But it's right now, June thirtieth at five fourteen Central as we're recording this, which means NBA free agency has been open for fourteen minutes. And this is I really need th- this is LJ's favorite favorite time. Favorite. I just can't wait. Favorite. I section. cannot wait to find out what happens. Yeah. And. We got it. I'm just going to throw, I don't know if, uh, dad's been on Twitter or not. So we're just going to get some rapid fire instant reaction from dad and, uh, and LJ, of course, because I know he's itching. Yeah. Because he is yeah. just chomping at the bit. Yep. Sources, uh, Adrian Wojnarowski says that Durant is signing a four year, Kevin Durant is signing a four year, $164 million deal with the Brooklyn Nets to team up with Kyrie Irving, who is also signing a four year, one hundred and forty-one really? million dollar deal. So leaving Golden State to team up with his old boy. It, we all thought, you know, for the past year, everyone's been saying Kyrie and and Kevin Durant going to New York and teaming up. But it was the Knicks, and now it's the Nets. Pops, what do you think? Well, so Kyrie is twenty-seven. Is that right? I think that's Kyrie, correct. Kyrie's still pretty young. KD is probably he's thirty. I think he's thirty. Thirty. Thirty-one. So Kyrie is one of those guys that I guess he can I guess he can wait around a year. I mean, you know what I'm saying? He's yeah, he's got to wait a he's got to wait right? a year to get KD. Um, they will be a hell of a duo, though. I will be anxious to watch some of their games, but we got to wait a year. Um, wow, that's apparently so. Apparently the uh, the Warriors offered Kevin Durant the max deal, the five year two twenty, and he turned it down to go to four year one sixty four in Brooklyn. Now. It's interesting. He didn't really the pay cut he took for the first four years of that warrior deal to what he's taking now. I don't think it's that much. It's only like five five million over the first four. The reason that one contract's so huge is because that fifth year that the Warriors could offer is for like fifty five, sixty million yeah, or whatever. Thirty five percent of the salary cap. Right? So it does look like a pay cut, but really, if he if he is able to sign another contract after this four years is up, which he'll be thirty four, and we'll see how he comes back from this injury. Maybe he makes all that money up, but. Interesting, say the uh, nonetheless, and I think it makes the NBA really interesting. Makes it interesting. Yeah. What happened to D'Angelo Russell? Anything happened with him yet? So here, I'll just kind of go off uh, some stuff for you. The Bucks signed All Star Chris Middleton. He's going to return on a five year, one hundred and seventy eight million dollar deal, max deal. Uh, JJ Redick has agreed to a contract with the New Orleans Pelicans. Really, hmm. Kimba Walker is going to Boston. Uh, it's kind of been rumored all weekend, and it's official. He's he's signing with the Boston. You no, know, there was a chance he was going to Dallas. I was kind of kind of hoping he might go to Dallas. I like Kimba Walker. I think yeah, he's a good I really player. like Kimba. I wasn't hoping he would go to Dallas. Kind of. I thought that's a lot of money to spend, and I kind of think Luca is the ball handler and the point guard. Well, you're and right. Kimba is you're that right. same player. I really like Kimba at, at, with Boston. I think that's he'll that's fit good, in Brad Stevens' offense. He'll be like. The mix between Isaiah Thomas and Kimba Walker, he's the good locker room guy, really good point guard that can play in that system and not be the the headache that Kyrie seems Kyrie to have. Irving it's going to be was, interesting. Yeah. Over the next week, Dad, there's going to be all <laughs> kinds of just slander Kyrie Irving from all the different Boston writers where now these coaches are going to open up and actually say what they really think about him. And I just – I can't wait to see all these anonymous – uh, sources talking about how awful Kyrie Irving was. Right. Uh, the D'Angelo Russell, yeah. we don't know about. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's any other big ones. There's not any other big ones as of this moment. Well, I'm here in Russell I hear that, to uh, Minnesota. What was it that we heard late? Something about uh, uh, Kimba, not Kawhi Leonard, Kawhi Leonard and somebody going somewhere. Oh, it was KD. It was Kawhi and KD going to like the Clippers, but I guess that's off. I mean, it's, KD really has signed. I mean, that's a deal. He went to that's Brooklyn. That's a deal. Here. He's going to make it official on the board. Well, technically, it's not yet, right? No, no they, can't make it official. Today at yet. six o'clock Eastern. No, yeah. 
18 minutes ago, mm-hmm. okay. 18 minutes ago, six o'clock Eastern. So five our time, he was able to make gotcha. it official. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. It. Oh, oh, so all those draft picks are wearing the right hats now. Yeah. Yes. They can now, yes. It's the new league Fantastic. year. So yes. now they can get their right oh. hats. Yes. That's oh. right. Thank you. LJ, so, okay. <laughs> what's the qu- other ones? What's some other ones? Uh, uh, well, now the big, the big domino left to fall is going to be, as you kind of mentioned, Kawhi Leonard, where he goes from here, what he does. Nothing on and that yet. Nothing on that. The late, as of late, I think on Thursday, the Lakers did a trade to clear up space. So now they have max room or just under max room. So a lot of people are saying they're in the Kawhi sweepstakes. It'll be interesting to see if he goes to LA. or uh, Jimmy Butler. I thought they were trying to maybe get Jimmy Butler. Maybe Houston, supposedly Houston. Jimmy Butler's going to Miami, which is the weirdest thing uh, I've heard. That's that's what people okay. are saying. Who we don't know. Those are the ones. Those are kind of the next two dominoes to fall. And I have no idea what's going to happen. LJ, why can you just tell? Okay, we know we make the long running joke. Why is it that you hate free agency so much? Can you just tell the people? Well, because we're sitting here talking about it. Like what? It's it's because when we when the NBA finishes, we spend weeks and weeks and weeks talking about who's going to be a free agent and which teams. But when the NFL finishes, we talk about is Gronk going to retire, and then we talk about wrestling, and then we move on. Like that's. That's the way it feels to me is like the championship. No, the Super Bowl matters and free agency is something we'd start talking about. Now we start talking about like who's going to be on uh, uh, hard knocks and stuff like now we haven't talked about the NFL outside of maybe a handful of rule changes really in the past like few months. What about I mean, the the draft gets talked about the free agency. You're right. It just isn't as big of a deal because of the franchise tag. I feel like. A lot of like the big name players don't. Yeah, go but to the free, free agent. Or, okay, okay. Here's my other problem though. The the draft is like the day after it felt like the damn finals. Like it just felt like it was immediately. Well, but maybe that's why they've got just, the momentum. I mean, maybe that's brilliant. While they've got the momentum, they do the draft lottery. Then they do the draft. It's like bam, bam, it's bam. It's oversaturation. It's oversaturation. They could do that t- four weeks later, and what what's going to interrupt it? What's going to interrupt it? Nothing. I, I, think, right I think their point is their point is like so. Right now, there's nothing. There's nothing going. Sports is kind of in a dead moment. So they want wrong to, the women's World Cup, the cricket championship. Like there's shit going on. We just did don't you just care say the because, cricket championship? Uh, Name one cricket team. I did. Name one cricket I did. team. Uh, this is national teams, Kevin. So I could say England. Still, I don't India. even know if you. Brazil. I don't even know if every country has a cricket team. I can't believe you just mentioned the Not cricket. Not every country has a cricket team because we don't care about it. But my point is that there are things going on right now that matter on a world scale. And if they waited a few weeks, they would avoid those things that matter in, say, India. And maybe they become the biggest sport in India. You know what I mean? Like this is like. Uh, you no, know, you know what's leading. This is very American centric. Go ahead. You know what's leading every single sports talk radio and TV show. For the past week and for the next week, it's going to be every NBA. single NBA. bullshit. I, Bull, every single. Well, are you kidding okay. me? Do you think talk radio only exists between <laughs> Miami and Alaska? Like, no, you're you're just wrong. You're straight wrong. <laughs> okay, I live. Yes. I live. Calm in down. Time North out, boys. Arkansas, LJ, and all they talk about you is, said every single, and, and all they talk about is <laughs> Arkansas. Everything, Arkansas football, baseball, basketball, whatever. I understand that only a Sith deals in absolutes and, is all I'm saying, and you're. You are Darth Maul over here talking to me about how the NBA is the most important thing in the world. And I'm trying to Luke Skywalker. I'm not saying it's the most important thing in the world. I'm just saying (laughs) I get what they're doing with the momentum. There's nothing big enough right now to take the momentum from them. So they're keeping it and they're leading in America. Okay. That's their biggest market. They're already leading America. They're already leading America. So they're, what? They're already leading America. So are you just upset because you don't care for the NBA as much and that people are talking about it? I'm upset that it feels dumb that they just try to do everything in a three month period and move on. Like the from from March, they don't get March because college basketball gets that. So from March till uh, what is it now? It's it's just before July. So March, April, May, June. So four months they fit everything that matters about the NBA in to one spot instead of making it a year round thing. That's that's the thing that irritates me. I don't understand why. Uh, Adam Silver's talked about is like some god because in theory he would make this a twelve month sport. He well, would make wait, this wait, something we care wait, about. Kevin, doesn't the summer league start like already? The summer league. The summer league started, starts like in the next three days. Yeah, I mean it is. Okay, it's, so are you guys going to watch summer league games? Well, I mean, I might watch a few. Yeah, I could. Are you going to watch Canadian football league games? <laughs> yes, I'm. I'm into Canadian football. Okay, so you're not the person we're talking about here. <laughs> no, I'm not I, watching Canadian football, but I will watch some of the summer league. <laughs> I just don't Will understand really? how. Yeah, I'll watch the first game where Zion's playing R.J. Barrett. Yeah, I'll I'll check in on that. I'll okay, check in maybe on that. I just don't care enough. But 
But so that's just, okay, whatever. You guys can have it. I don't care. That's fine. Let's talk about NBA some more. Well, <laughs> let's do it. Well, we're going to have, what I'm going to have Thompson Thompson sign. Clay Thompson, Clay, right? He, Clay well, I don't know if he's actually Ghost signed up. Actually, yeah, I know they offered him I a care max about deal. Him. What, what else? They offered him a max deal. They did offer I, him. I genuinely care about him. No, I'm saying like, I do want to know more about Clay Thompson. They, uh, of all the people, I don't, I don't care what, where Kimba Walker signs, but I want to know about Clay Thompson. Word is, is that I, like I heard is about. that Golden State right away said we're offering him the five year, I guess the max, the Fantastic. max they could do. And Clay Thompson said like right away, that's what I want to do. Let's sign. That's what I read. Too. Fantastic. Well, that it hasn't been official yet from what I can see, but also I think Clay Thompson's like in another in another country right now. I think he's vacationing and he's just being being Clay Thompson. I don't feel like for whatever reason he just never seems like someone who's gonna be stressing over this July first and he just was waiting. And and the Warriors we talked about the injuries that happened in the finals and it looks like they were willing to give KD and Clay both the max contract and they were not worried at all about these injuries. And I'm happy for Clay. I I, I kind of wanted to see I really like I had pipe dreams of Clay as a as a Dallas Maverick. I just thought that'd be awesome, but I knew it was never gonna happen. So I'm yeah, I, I didn't I see think that LJ happen. and this is why I think free agency has been talked about so much with NBA is because we've had these one team just seemed like it was way better than the other. And now we reason we look forward to this free agency in particular was now I think the Celtics getting Kimball Walker, they're not gonna be great, but they're gonna be as good as they were last year, I think, because that that was a mess. Oh good. The the Brooklyn getting KD and Kyrie, they're going to be legit title contenders. The Lakers getting AD and LeBron, they're legit Neat. title contenders. The Warriors, if uh-huh. Clay and Steph are still healthy, are legit title contenders. I so I think so. Getting, we went from a league. What you're saying, right? We went from a league of basically LeBron James's team and the Golden State Warriors being the only title for contenders. four straight years. That was we for knew that was going to be the finals, me, though, but and they to, to where year. now there are. You just named, I think, five, and there's probably seven legitimate. And the Sixers, we don't Kevin know what the Sixers. Celtics are as good as they're going to be last year. But uh, but this year it wasn't LeBron's team and the Warriors. No, LeBron's it wasn't this year. That's right. I, you're right. Boy, you're technicality. You're so, technicality, LJ. Today. Well, no, I'm just saying we've had like we've had like six months of it not being LeBron's team because the Lakers didn't look. But good. But it was still the like Warriors. Ever, it was they? still until it was the, the Warriors, KD period. injury. Yeah. Until the KD right. injury. You're saying the Warriors have been dethroned, and you're saying so. What you're saying is if. Um, the Patriots had a whole bunch of free agency woes. Then all of a sudden we would just like literally talk about in, uh, NFL free agency every single day after the championship. Like I just don't, the NFL doesn't that, have the no issue that, that the NBA had where the regular season law lo- got lost some value because we were just like waiting for the Warriors to win it all. The NFL, honestly, I have no idea who can, who will win the Super Bowl next year. It, you could tell me probably 25 of the 32 teams. And I go, well, I mean, maybe if they click, everything clicks, right? It's possible. Well, and, and the NBA is not that's kinda, that way. I agree with you. And that's why the NFL I agree with has you, and I think it has a lot more to do. We've talked about this before. I think it has a lot, to, a, a lot more to do with the fact that in the NBA, one player makes such a huge difference, which is why I, I almost felt like, and this is not something that would work in the general public, but like the, the rule that would make me a big fan of the NBA is if like players had like a 30 minute playing limit per night or something like that, because one player making such a big difference means that the contracts you sign are just as important as the entire regular season. And so uh, that's what turns me off of the whole thing is it's, it's really to, to understand the NBA, you have to understand contract negotiations and that's not fun for a sports fan in my opinion. Uh, but I'm a sports fan of a particular type. So, <laughs> well, the my biggest issue with the NBA free agency is I don't really like when it happens. I, I think a lot of these guys, it seems like a lot of this is happening right now, but I hate that, especially if you're someone who covers the NBA and you're someone who writes like it, for Wojnowski or any of these people who really cover the NBA, like to happen on July 4th week, I think is dumb. Like let's have a vacation. Let's go hang out. Like, on July fourth, when I'm up, when we're all at the river, I'm gonna want to hang out with y'all. I don't want to check my Twitter to see where Kawhi Leonard signs. That I do hate, and I think they could do set a different it, time. Set, set free agency to start on August first. Set the draft to be on August second, so you can even get trades officially to happen before the draft. Just throwing that Possibly, out. Possibly, maybe they're where they okay. lose momentum to the MLB because All Star Weekend happens like in a couple weeks, I think. So I, I don't know. That's fair. No, that's a fair complaint for sure. I don't know, but either way, as we mentioned. It is. Oh, well, and LJ, since you, you brought it up, if anyone's out there trying to go to us NBA summer league game, or if you're trying to get some Brooklyn Nets <laughs> tickets, hell, I don't I'm know. I'm sure there are so many people going to summer league games. I actually think you'd be surprised. I think it sells out I now. Think, yeah. So you'd be surprised. Uh, 
Why? Why do high school games sell? Because out? it's the most popular sport on earth. Actually, it's I mean it's an international it's, sport. It, it's Bull. not okay. It, it is shit. soccer is going to okay. beat it. But Go on. Soccer is going to okay. beat it. Mister Technical LJ will get me there. You're right. No, but no, but wait, basketball. You're, throw but, 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 but you're right. Okay. You're right. I'm, I, let me back okay. off. You're right. It's not the most popular <laughs> sport in the world. S- but it is a very palpitating. It is a very international sport. I mean, it's it's yeah, it's it is it is it's way better than football. It's for sure. Way bigger than football. So yeah. There's that. Damn. No, no. But, so if you're trying, if you're trying to go watch one of these new teams or go to any games, I think that our Dallas Mavericks are going to look a lot different after this year. Dad, it'll be interesting. And right now, SeatGeek is offering anybody from our podcast, any of our listeners, a little extra bonus. If you go over to SeatGeek and put in the promo code ACAA, they'll give you 10 bucks or 20. Well, excuse me, 20 bucks. Whoa. Yeah, not 10. Kevin, did you just double, double the amount it. that you'd get back? But Kevin? wait, there's Whoa. more. Did you talk to the seat geek guys before you just doubled it? I mean, I just misspoke. You it know, was great power long. comes with great responsibility. It was This is coming out of your part, Kev. This is coming out of your part. So $10 comes out of Kevin's pocket here. <laughs> it was the art of the deal. It was 20 all along, but I threw 10 out just so I could say, but wait, if you do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. I just want the listeners to know we're taking it straight out of his paycheck. Yes, and, so. right out. <laughs> and not only is SeatGeek throwing our listeners an extra twenty twenty dollars when you fir- when you first sign on, they're also just it's the easiest site to buy tickets from. They take the confusion out of ticket buying. They'll put on when you go looking for, go look for your tickets. They'll have a red dot for the bad deals, the yellow dots for the decent deals, and the green dots for the ones where you're getting the best bang for your buck. And it it just makes what can be a confusing time an easier situation when you're buying tickets yeah. online. And it, right now, like I said, if you head over to SeatGeek, put in the promo code ACAA. That's for Armchair All Americans, one of our presenting partners. They uh they'll give you twenty bucks off your ticket, so you get you get some drinks or something like just like that, and that'll get you twenty bucks off your first ticket purchase. All right, we mentioned it, July fourth. I got. I, I kind of want to do a little a little July Fourth talk with you guys, and we're all going to be together for. I don't know. Is it the third, fourth year in a row? It's kind of become a tradition. At least the, I know it's happened a lot. Yeah. At least this little tree. Last time like I got drunk enough to where I didn't <laughs> remember much of it. Was that but. last year or year before last? <laughs> that was, was that last, last year. year. Yeah. That was last year because it was our. It was still technically our honeymoon, and Hannah drove home not happy. Yeah. Well, for most of that. Trip. LJ started uh, losing clothes and couldn't find them. <laughs> <laughs> and and didn't care. <laughs> Did not care. <laughs> oh boy! So, Dad, yeah. you're, you're a big July. You you love July Fourth. It's a big weekend up at the river, and you're always up there. Yes. A, a big part of that. What what's your favorite part about July Fourth? Wow, that's a good question, Kevin. Probably my favorite part is the whole fireworks part. It's like getting over to David's and sitting in the front porch, getting the chairs yeah. out, sitting there talking to everybody. Spraying the bug spray, you know, spray, spraying the bug ready. spray, popping a cold one, and just yeah, and, yeah. and just waiting for the fireworks to start. You know, there's that little wayward firework. There's one, and there's yep. another one, and then you know, yeah. blah blah blah. Right, and then all of a sudden it starts, bam, 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 and then yeah. I don't know that part. That's probably my favorite part. I I do want to yeah. take a second and say shout out to the guys that work the fireworks wherever you're watching fireworks. Everywhere. Those, those, yep. those men and women are working their they work arse in. off and we're just sitting there in the chair watching oh. fireworks. And I never realized how much they were last year. And yeah, we helped one of them last year. We helped sweat. Yeah. Although I will say last year, my biggest problem was the pulls from that bottle <laughs> more than the setting down the fireworks. Yes. But. <laughs> Apparently it was a requirement when we did the fireworks, you had to take a pull off a f- bottle of 40 Creek. <laughs> Every time you got a new load of fireworks. And <laughs> hence why I got to the point that I got to. No, it was just That's trying to be real hopeful. Off. And it turned it was into hot. It. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, one, setting up the fireworks, we saw firsthand how much that is. But I've seen, like, uh, shout out to David. I've seen David afterward just drenched in sweat. Cause my, I mean, I just think those people are working yeah. way harder than you realize. What and you know what something I think that the listeners should know uh, I'm I'm a Chicago and right uh, that's not a secret and uh, the the Navy Pier fireworks I don't think those people work half as hard as your local person running it at your church or your golf course or whatever like those people are true heroes like 
they're they are working hard for your entertainment all night long and all day long beforehand. Um, and and so huge shout out to those sorts of like local guys. Well, because on. there there's absolutely an art to to how you set fireworks out, you know, and yep. what you yep. light when you light it. And I, you're yep. right, not only the physical work, but they put some thought and effort into yep into what you see. So I'm glad you brought that. And up. if something goes wrong, there's only a handful of people going out there to even look at it. Yeah, and uh, right. So. I am brave enough. Well, because y'all are out there drinking Forty Creek. We want to stay back. <laughs> I'm scared to death. There's fire in Forty Creek. Oh my god! I, I don't. I don't envy those people's job because I like being able to sit back in my chair and just watch the fireworks. And and the main thing I'm just saying is, hey, right. can you throw me another beer? But I right, do appreciate. Right. I do appreciate yes, those people. A, very a much so. Very much and so. Right, right. Right. When you're watching fireworks, you know, I always feel like everyone's. When you're watching the fireworks, you're kind of like, oh, here it is. Here's the final. And there's, you know, you're kind of like, oh, wait, this isn't the finale. Now this isn't it yet. This isn't it yet. What, how do you kind of judge when that finale is coming? Do you know what I'm asking? Do you get what I'm trying to say? I, yeah, no, I, I totally get your question. And I, and I also fail it. I'm, I'm really bad about it, but I think the answer is if, if at any point you hear Lee Greenwood's voice, you know, the finale is coming (laughs) out. That's, that's (laughs) fair. Yes. And so that's my answer. That's your, what about you, Dad? What do you, what do you kind of? Well, no, I do that a lot. I'm like, oh, I think that was it. And then, oh, oh, that was and, it. And that's got to be it. We talked about then, the fireworks guy right, and girl running. It. They always do that where there's like a, a pretty th- a big show and then it kind of slows down and like stops for a second. You're like, right. all right, that was fun. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, wait, wait, the encore. Well, so, you yeah. know, last yeah. year or last year, year before last year, maybe the last couple of years, I've had some involvement in the fireworks at the river. So I was sitting there out there with D-Mac, you know, David McGonagill. And, uh, anyway, what, what he loved is when you hear like a round of applause, you hear a little round of applause from everybody sitting around watching yeah. and you're like, we're not yeah. done yet. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. that's the best. That's the He's best. He's just sitting it's there like, smiling, getting ready to light the big, like, the, the big ones hell, off. We, we ain't even done yet. Here it comes. <laughs> that's pretty fun. <laughs> Yeah, I, I always, I always like to be the like, like a look at the people who are excited, like, oh man, that was good. And they start getting up your chair, like, uh, uh-uh, uh, I don't think we're done yet. And nope. of course, I usually end up being the person who's holding off, like, wait, there might still be more. There might still be more. And I keep just assuming the fireworks are never going to end for twenty minutes. Yeah, we've been sitting there for <laughs> an hour watching fireworks, and I'm like, but wait, they could come back any minute now. LJ doesn't have a shirt on. Yeah, I was going to say grass. some of that has other influences. <laughs> Oh, wait, the sun's coming up tomorrow. And you're like, let's wait. I don't think they're done. <laughs> what is, I was going to ask you guys, and I'll, I'll start with you, L. It, it, what is like, it, there's a couple of them, I feel like, but a song that you hear every year when you get, start getting ready for that. Because there, especially now, there's always a Bluetooth speaker set up. There's a song that'll play. What, what song would yeah. you say if you had to list just one? Well, I think I've already Ye- I've already implied the the answer. I agree the, with you. Lee Greenwood uh, will proudly stand up next to you. Yeah, and, defend uh, her to and- still today. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it sounds better through the, uh, through the speakers the than it does through through your voice, Pop. <laughs> well, are you are you serious? No, it sounded pretty great. <laughs> I agree. I, Dad, keep it up. Well, it's God Bless <laughs> the USA by Leo Greenwood. Lee Greenwood, though that's yeah. that's the. Fourth that of July song. song. That's what about is it? I mean, like we're gonna hear, we're gonna hear like uh, 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 "Sexy Can I." Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, "Sexy course. Can I" uh, will be a good July the Fourth song. <laughs> there's a list of songs we're gonna hear. Uh, probably some John Mayer trio. What's there, the, there's some songs we're gonna what's hear. The, yes, is it but a, Lee Greenwood's? Everyone's gonna hear. Is it Toby Keith has a, a song? Toby Keith's got played? the American Soldier. I think it gets played a lot. Uh, he's also got another one like congrats uh, the. The red, white, and blue something, courtesy yeah. of the red, white, and blue. We're gonna something kick yeah. your ass and <laughs> rain yeah. hell all over you if you screw with us. Got courtesy of the red, white, yep. and blue. Um, <laughs> yep. What are some uh, others? Yeah, courtesy uh, of the red, white, and blue. American Soldier by uh, Toby Keith. American Boy by Estelle. That's what it says. One of the ones. Well, what about I saw American Badass? Whoa. American Badass by Kid Rock. I mean, that's a pretty good one. We have to play that one. <laughs> We're about to play that one at the river. There's um, some good ones. That, there's definitely some good ones. Uh, and then, you know, one that's got to get played just because it, it's mentioned in USA and it's just a perfect song for, for partying is got to get some Miley Cyrus. 
party uh, in the USA in there. Yeah, I got that was on my one. list. Absolutely. That's on <laughs> yeah. my list for sure. You know, another thing, though, is if you're lucky, you're listening to an original song or a cover by Jed Harrelson or Herschel Flanagan. Yes. If you're yeah. lucky, that's the right song you're hearing on 4th of July. Well, and oh, by the way, I'm pretty sure they're going to be there. So there's a good chance of that. And I think, right. actually, I think Jed's going to have his almost his full band. So, hey, I mean, oh, go. right. could be a, a little party band, on a a patio. On Fourth of July weekends, always, always a plus. Hey, another another couple of decent Fourth of July songs I want to throw in. American Girl by Tom Petty, who is just like, to me, Mr. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Americana, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, anything yeah. by Tom Petty is good on Fourth of July. Rest in peace. R.I.P. Yeah, what a guy. And another guy yeah. that I really like is, is, is John Mellencamp and Pink Houses. I think Pink Houses is a very Americana song. You know, Jack and Diane. Too. Jack and Diane. Jack and Diane is something I expect to hear. Yeah. Mellencamp's yeah. just an yeah. Americana kind of guy. You know, he's yeah. just the old cougar. Just the old cougar. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, Love another him. thing happens, it's, it happens every year on July 4th is the Nathan's hot dog eating contest. And dad, I, you, uh, you are both, are bo- both are not a fan of this, correct? I'm not. No, I love it. I'm, I'm a huge a fan. fan. I'll watch it every year. Yeah, you don't like I'm watching not. it, do you, pops? It's sickening. It's gross to watch. <laughs> it's disgusting. It is disgusting. <laughs> I watched that damn yeah. Joey Chestnut. He's putting water on the buns yep. and just shoving them. Yep. Uh, what the hell? That's yep. gross. <laughs> you don't have any desire yep. to watch him shoving that stuff, shoving hot dogs and buns. And there's <laughs> no an art to it though. If you kind of watch those, it's like uh, they'll eat the wiener part and then they'll go get the the bun and shove it and they'll put yep. like two buns and yep. they'll, like they haven't. There is a little bit of an art and you got to appreciate it. You know, honestly. I, I want to write a, a Broadway musical based on the Nathan's hot dog eating <laughs> contest where we ask an audience up on an audience member up on the stage and they also have to eat a uh, hot dog with the cast. I think that's going to be a great show, but <laughs> it will be one that dad might not watch. He might not go watch your, your, your Broadway <laughs> well, musical. They, you, so I looked Hopefully up a few things. I looked up a few things on this stuff and, and I mean, I've got some information if y'all want to go on, but the biggest thing I wanted to know Please. is how do they, so Joey Chestnut ate 74 hot dogs. Whew. Right. 74. How does that come out of his body? That's what I want to know. How? Well, I think you know. Does he, how does, does he how purge? Does usually does he come out of your no, body? No, no, no. I think, I think it comes out the way the, you the normal You think it way. goes through his you digestive tract. Do you want me to explain crack. the digestive system to you? Yeah. Uh, tell me I how you're going to shit well, no, out no, 74 hot dogs. Uh, I mean... Is, no, this is a. I think this is a fair question. I mean, you, I have, think he, like, you have to he, flush like a, every two hot dogs while you're shitting. I mean, so, what? Come on. So like, a I, I think flush. July fifth, July fifth around nine p.m. He goes to the bathroom probably once every two hours after every cup of coffee he has because he's trying to rush it out of his system. Um, but yeah, no, I think I think it just I, it just goes essentially straight through. Like it doesn't even it doesn't stop for energy. Well, I'm going to tell you, I went so far as to got on uh, to some uh, journal of gastroenterology. <laughs> of okay. course, okay. that's so. And lit. the guy, yeah. the doctor said, this is all he would say: either they purge it or it comes out the normal way. So, but that doesn't tell me anything. Well, those are the options. Well, those are the. I mean, I could tell you that <laughs> yeah. journal of gastroenterology. <laughs> right. Right, but it certainly didn't come out as damn ears. I want to know how the hell they deal with putting seventy four hot dogs in their stomach. How does that that has to go somewhere? And and I, there's one by the way. There's a jalapeno eating contest. Where is it? In ooh, Laredo, uh, Texas. So Molly nice. Schuler ate two hundred and sixty five jalapenos. <whistles> Do you know what happens to a jalapeno that goes in? It has to come out, y'all. And I'm just telling you, that's flaming anus for, I mean. Oh, wow. Did we just get a show? Call the band name. I called the band name. (laughs) That's, I don't know how you deal with that. Why would anybody want to do that to themselves? I I would hesitate to make that the episode. At at first, when I first heard it, that sounded like an episode name. I'm not downloading. Whoa. Uh, That might scare some people. I'm not downloading flaming anus. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> I guess you could back that up with the ice cream eating contest. You could go straight from the jalapeno to the ice cream eating contest. Okay. Well, that actually leads me to the question I wanted to ask you guys because I have a thought in my head. And I'll start with you, Pops. If you were going to have to be in a eating contest where you're going to try to eat the most of something out of a group, yes. what would you choose? I wouldn't choose hot dogs. I think I know what I would choose. No. What would you choose? What do you think you'd be good at? You know, good at I think or just I would, want to eat. Well, I mean, I was about to say that, well, that's exactly I had to, that I could eat a lot of a or B that I really like. And, and I kind of went with something that is kind of bridges the gap between the two. Okay. So for me, it would be 
Rice Krispie treats. That's what it would be. <laughs> because wow. I actually like Rice Krispie treats and I can eat a shitload of them. So Ooh, just think could you about, imagine this man's sugar high? Yeah, you'd be crazy high. Yeah. That's like legitimate rice, right? So like doesn't that expand in your stomach when you eat a dead and rice? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe I maybe a bad choice. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to be hurt. You're Damn. also going to be stopped up for days, I, th- I feel like. Um, <laughs> More than hot dog buns? I mean, come on. True. I guess they're about the same. No, yeah, I don't the, know. The thing we talked about, I talked about this with Benji, uh, a fan, of, a friend of the podcast. Friend of the pod, yeah. And uh, we we did talk about uh, avoid cheese. Cheese could be a problem yeah, if you're right. overdoing that. But but anyway. El, yeah. el, all right, El, we'll toss over to you then. What would be your, your food of choice if you were getting in a contest? So what we were talking about, because again, I talked about this uh, for for upwards of four minutes, <laughs> and we uh, we landed on you need to have something that's going to limit you in a way that's not going to like harm you. Because like if you have too much, say cheese, it's going to have its own issues. If you have too much, like say breakfast sausage, you're going to have like a sodium problem, right? So we're landing on. Uh, I think like I think I would like to do tacos because I think the limiting factor is the bread that you're going to end up eating. Like a, like a crunchy taco, a soft taco. What are we? Either one. I'd go the crunchy. Okay. I'd go the crunchy. I, I'm with you. I kind of like the taco. Why would you go the crunchy? Because I just think it's less filling. A corn tortilla than a flour tortilla is a little more volume. So I want. I actually want more filling in the bread than otherwise because it's still going to affect everybody the same way, right? right. But then the bread's the thing that fills me up. As opposed to say the the cheese, which could give me some other issue or something like that. Like the bread, I can eat more bread than I can like carry in in a sitting, I think, and and still like not <laughs> die. <gross>. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um. So so, but I'm thinking. But either way, I mean, I, and I think one of the br- brilliant things about tacos is like, hopefully, if you're at a a, a contest worth its salt, it's going to bring you a different taco for each like next taco. And that would be, I think, like a, a fun way to, because like a hot dog eating, con- 70 hot dogs doesn't even sound good if you're doing it over the course of like 100 days. That sounds <laughs> awful. And so <laughs> 70 tacos, though, over over a minute and a half or, or an hour, a minute and a half is the dumbest thing yeah. that I could think of. But, <laughs> but over the course of an hour, it seems like something that you could get through and, and enjoy I mean, well, no, you couldn't enjoy 70, 70 tacos. You couldn't enjoy 70 anything in eating, I don't but, know, besides rice. But you made a point, LJ, <laughs> that I want to say something about. To me, I might get in an eating contest if there wasn't a time element. If I got three days to eat all the fried shrimp I want to eat or, you know, something like that. <laughs> well, but that's not an eating contest. That's gluttony. Well, let's just, <laughs> that's, okay. that's just so, a, a look ahead to this I, weekend for me. I would okay. Right. I guess I would get right. in a gluttony gun to contest, <laughs> <laughs> not an eating contest. Okay, you know, um, um, honorable me- mention is pizza for a similar reason. Bread's going to fill you up before anything that's going to harm I you. I thought about but, pizza because uh, there's been some times I've been at, at little C- or at uh, uh, CC's Pizza back when I was see. younger, and I would just CC? just dominate, yeah. dominate just pizza. And I think I think I could be a formidable opponent on on a pizza eating contest, but. You, well, go ahead. I'm not trying to win a contest. I'm not trying to win any of the contests. So the other thing I thought about was like maybe a, a beer or whiskey contest. Wait, what have you? Do you not um, know the famous words from from what was it? Herm Edwards. You play <laughs> to win the game. Come on, now. that's fair. But sometimes, sometimes you play to eat the pizza. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> but we're in a contest here. You're not just going to Pequots for an enjoyable slice. Look, I'm just saying. A great shout out. But I'm just saying that this wouldn't be the first time. Like, I've played football just to get to, to pizza at times. So, um. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, I got some other options, though, for I eating got, contests. Here, here's, okay. here's my option. I'm going to go Give with yours. mine okay. real quick. And it, I was All torn right. between Bring the it. two, but this is the one I think, one, I could do the best at, and it would be really enjoyable. Donut eating contest. Just some glazed donuts. Ooh, I think. No. I, I, Sugar's going to be a problem, guys. You guys are messing up. That's true. And that's why my other option mm. was kolache. Just a good old pig in the blanket contest. Ooh, just, those kolaches yeah. are tasty. Yes, they I are. Probably, good. Yeah. I love a good jalapeno stuffed kolache, but I probably ought to take those jalapenos out because, yeah, like no, Dad said, those 70 <laughs> jalapeno kolaches got to come out one way or the other. Yeah. <laughs> and I might try to avoid that, but I, do you not get, do you guys not feel like whenever there's donuts brought to work, I can, I, I can in my head go, Oh, I don't, I don't need any donuts. That's bad for you, whatever. And then all of a sudden 
like a second's gone by and I've already had three and I'm thinking about grabbing a fourth one. Like donuts See? just go by so fast. <laughs> donuts I can bypass. Can I can I can walk away from a donut. I can. It's if hard, I'm eating one, I, I guarantee I get a, a blood sugar one. test, Kev. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> donuts just been a week. I just feel like like three bites and it's gone. I could probably stuff a whole donut in my mouth at once. So there we go. I just start just shoving them and then you know i'm not i we talked about it a little bit on the podcast i'm not a sweets person for dessert i want a second steak so true. that's true um i you know avoid the sugar give me something hey savory. tammy brought but i'm gonna eat something too salty tammy brought some donut holes home the other day though and like it was the next day and i put them in the microwave for like 21 seconds and they came out and they were just nectarish of the gods <laughs> it was so good I mean, slightly melting oh, sugar on the on the outside of a doughy donut ball. Oh, oh my Lord. God, it was so good. <laughs> I'm getting excited. Just my mouth. I'm salivating just hearing about it over here. <laughs> Pops, what was some of your honorable yeah. mention? I felt uh, it sounded like you had so, some honorable mention on there. Here's one that I actually had, and I think y'all might have had with me the first time in Chicago at where we got our. Uh, what's the beer we get? The the uh, heavy beer that we go get at uh, O'Shaughnessy's. A Guinness Stout. Oh, Guinness. And yeah. we got some poot. Did we get? No, that wasn't Poutine. That was uh, poutine. No, poutine. Poutine. <laughs> okay, Poutine. <laughs> what that wasn't you in call O'Shaughnessy's. It? O'Shaughnessy's. <laughs> what did you call it? No, let's not even go into the Poutine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, Poutine. Yeah, O'Shaughnessy's had the shepherd's pie egg rolls, but we got the Poutine over by Wrigley. Yes, Bell. which is the French bar. fries Murray's or? with cheese and yeah. gravy on them, basically, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so they have a, a smokes poot. Say the word. <laughs> Poutine. Poutine, poutine eating contest in Toronto each year. The winner uh, ate 20 pounds, 20 pounds in 10 minutes. That's a lot of poutine. You know what? Okay, so oh poutine's a good answer God. because I think if the if the if the winner got more poutine, I think I'd still enter it. That just sounds just because like you contest. could eat some poutine, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's a, anyone, there's another one. Anyone? This by is the way, if you haven't had poutine. My mind oh, was blown. Go get the it. First Don't time let I the name it. turn you off. It's oh. like charcuterie. Give it a shot anyway. <laughs> yes. I know, LJ was like, Just y'all should like poutine. I was like, that sounds weird. And it was, <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, now what were right? you going to say? <laughs> a poo-poo platter sounds bad. Tastes good, right? That's, I mean, a poo-poo platter. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Yeah, your dad's all okay. over the place right now between flaming anuses and, and poontang and poo-poo platters. I mean, he's just everywhere. <laughs> okay, here's another one. In Indianapolis, and I've got this with really question mark, but in Indianapolis, they have the St. Elmo Shrimp Cocktail Eating Championship. Why would you have that in Indianapolis? Shrimp Cocktail Eating Contest. That sounds hard. It It does sound hard to have it. It's like having a sushi contest in North Dakota. Okay, well, that was odd. (laughs) But they backed that up with the ice cream eating contest. And the guy in in Indianapolis... (laughs) He ate 15.5 pints of vanilla ice cream in six minutes. Oh. I mean, you would have brain oh. freeze. You couldn't do that. Oh, yeah, I've got such a gosh, problem. You'd be so okay, full and just so, hearing. Oh, man. All right. One more. One more. In Keystone, Colorado, they have the Berkwood Farms Baking Eating Champ- Championship. Now, I have heard about this. Now. Before or after legalization? <laughs> I, think, I think bacon's <laughs> legal everywhere, but I hope so. No, well... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not what you meant. <laughs> yeah, no, but go ahead. Yeah, I bet I bet that bacon eating contest got an uptick in, in the, like the winner, the number. I know it's like amount. steroids got legalized in Colorado. <laughs> yeah. Well, but the winner like ate a pound of bacon in like 10 minutes or something. I'm like, yeah, is that? <clears throat> I don't know. Is that amazingly crazy? I mean, I. Well, what's a pound? A pound is like what you buy in like a whole package of bacon, right? Yes, so. <laughs> All right. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy some bacon on the way down to the river. I'll cook it for you. All right. Cook a pound. Let's see what happens. I don't know if I want to eat a pound yeah, of bacon a- at the river, but I'm just saying. In 10 minutes. In 10 <laughs> you minutes. Don't. You don't want to eat a pound of bacon anywhere is what I I, I think the it answer is. It didn't sound is, that horrible to me. It didn't sound like 265 jalapenos to me. So Well, there, yeah, there's a different spectrum there. There's You're a different spectrum, that. yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! I just think between kolaches and donuts, those are those are my main ones. I just feel like I could. Tear I like kolaches better. Donuts, up. yeah, that's a good. Kolaches one. is but a good not one. the spicy ones. I the jalapenos are going to be a problem. So you're right. You 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 pull that out. Uh, mm. the the only thing that perturbs me from the hot dog eating contest, I think it's kind of interesting. But the whole stuff in the bun in the water, I just that a soggy bun oh, sounds. Well, 
disgusting to me. Well, okay, so you're watching it because you want to watch people enjoy eating hot dogs? Well, at least part of me can feel like, like at least the guy eating, or the, the man or woman eating this 10 pounds of, or a pound of bacon, at least that sounds enjoyable. Like, it tastes good. That, why? Well, okay, but it, 10 pounds, though. Well, okay, well, I've... Do you really think it tastes good after 10 pounds? But, and the other thing is, it's technique. Are you, like, sitting here saying, like, oh, I, I really like watching the NFL, but I wish the, the linemen didn't lift so many weights, because that that's kind of... No, because uh, that they're more... Takes me away from That's different. Thing. I feel like that's different. I feel like you're comparing apples to oranges here. So you're saying if they took the... Why can't fruit be compared? Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but these are apples and oranges. Um... <laughs> But so, like, you would like it okay if they ate 74 hot dog wieners? That would be better to you than eating the 74 buns with it? It's, it's, I just, no, it's I don't mind the buns. I just don't like the soggy buns. I just don't, I just, I can, I'm not even a big texture guy, but that sounds awful to me. That wet bread. Right. But they're not, the contest isn't watching them enjoy this food. Like, at the end of every single one of these contests, you see somebody that just looks like they're desperate to keep living. And, uh, and, and so you're sitting there, you're watching somebody come up with a great strategy and everybody copying. And so you're watching somebody was the Bill Belichick of the hot dog eating sport and Joey Chestnut. And you're saying that Joey Chestnut, well, I don't know. I don't know that he invented the dipping it in water. Did he? I, I mean, he's he like just perf- one of he the seemed like he perfected the hot dog eating. He's one of like three or four greats. You guys are forgetting about like, like Kobayashi. Kobayashi. Yeah. I can't remember Kobayashi's yeah. name actually. And, and if you was, notice, the best uh, eaters are not morbidly obese people at all. They oh no, they like never are. Yeah. yeah, there are a few that are huge people, and they tend to get like fifth, sixth, seventh. Yeah, they don't yeah. win. I'm just, you know what? Though honestly, I can tell you, I never really care to see an eating contest. I just, that's just, I like talking about them. They're kind of funny to talk about, and yeah. but I don't want to see one. I don't, I don't have well, any desire. I always think of that. Uh, have you guys watched, uh, is it Stand By Me, where the, he tells the story about the eating contest? Have you guys seen that? Mm, it's uh, been a long time. All right. So homework is maybe watch Stand By Me because it's a great classic movie. But uh, but he talks about an eating contest where a guy eats like Ipecac before the eating contest just to mess with the entire town. And it's disgusting. It's one of the most awful yeah, things I in think you're right. History. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, Vegas has set the over under for Joey Chestnut this this week at, at the hot dog eating contest <laughs> at seventy three and a half. What would you What do you guys going over Ooh. or under? Well, he had seventy four last uh, year, right? So yeah, but you but sometimes you got to get in the zone. I'm going. No, I'm going under. I'm going under. Kevin, where do I go to put in a bet on under? Well, because interestingly, that's not- you ask if you're betting <laughs> the best place to bet is over at my bookie. Since we've started the show, we get asked all like questions about who to bet on and what who to what sites to bet with. Well, I I don't really know who to bet on, but I know <laughs> you got to be betting over at my bookie. Between their live in-game betting, endless props, fantasy sports wagers, everything. They got something for just about everyone. And right now they're hooking our listeners up all month over at mybookie.ag. The rest you of this use, month that we're recording or the rest of the month that once when you hear When you hear it, yeah, not as we're recording. Okay. When you hear it. <laughs> okay. For, yeah, this is the way I scam the, the listener. Uh, <laughs> no, they're hooking all our listeners up right now. If you visit mybookie.ag and use the promo code JPP for Just Press Play Pod, duh. When you're creating your account, you can claim a 50% bonus. So if you're laying down 100 you get an extra $50 in play. That's at mybookie.ag. M Y B O O K I E dot A G with the promo code J P P. By the way, guys, do you guys know what in Vegas, like what they make the most money on as far as the casinos? Could you guess? I found this on uh, Twitter the other day. Hmm. I'm going to say this is a great question. Yeah. Uh, I've never been to Vegas, so this is going to be a completely just like assuming sort of like I don't see the tables or anything. Um, I think people think they can win their money on blackjack. Pops, what about you? Well, so I'm but you're say saying, like, what is your question? What the casinos make the most money, or what they pay out the most on? What, is what your... they make the what oh, the casinos so slots, makes right. the most money on? But they can turn well, their I slots. I was thinking blackjack because I think a lot of people. Um, Go ahead. Sorry, I'm interrupting. No, you're fine. I mean, I'm thinking. I think table games are your best odds. Is kind of what I think my understanding is. So dice. Well, but so perhaps. I think like the question is that I'm asking myself is I think blackjack is the one where I feel like I know numbers. I know how to right, count right, to right. 21. So I'm going to go win my money back and I won't because that's not the way it works. Right. But then uh, slots are the ones that I think have probably the most people. But again, I haven't been to Vegas. I'm not a so slots guy. An assumption. Um, so what's your answer, LJ? What, what was your answer? To, is what the casino makes with, the most, right? Right. And I think I'm going with slots with blackjack as number two. I, that's my I guess. think I would, I think I would go with slots too. 
uh, Kevin. Well, from this is from Darren Ravel on Twitter. Apparently, it is penny slots. Penny slots make the most in Vegas, I guess, because everyone plays wow. it. In the last 12 months, uh, money that Nevada has made over gambling in penny slots, it's $3.3 billion. Wow. Just to give you a little comparison, sports gambling netted Nevada $310 million. Wow. That's how so much more penny slots. That's exponentially bigger, right? You oh. said. That's 10 times. 10 times, yes. Like LJ told us the difference wow. between, like last week, or was it a couple weeks ago, maybe the, the billion to million. Between a million and a billion, yeah. 3.3 mm. 3 billion in penny slots over 12 months and 310 million on sports gambling over 12 months. Wow. wow. It just blew my mind when I saw that. And I was like, I got to share this with LJ and Pops now. Wow. Okay. Wow. Man, crazy. Yeah, I'm blown so away. So we were right. We were kind of right up. then, LJ. Yeah, right. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, in a sense, yeah. Okay. Look at us go. Let's go. And I want to switch gears with you guys. And LJ, you had a fun, a fun topic you wanted to to get in get into with us. And are you ready to lay out? I I don't even have an idea what it is. You're just going to tell me. Yeah, and I appreciate that. Uh, so <laughs> here's the deal. Uh, I would like you guys to close your eyes real quick, okay? And listeners, feel free to join along. So unless, unless, you're, unless you're driving, driving. unless you're, you're driving, if you're driving, driving keep your eyes, eyes open. open. Fantastic point. Fantastic <laughs> point. <laughs> All right, well, so there's going to be so listeners. Rex that are going to be like, what happened? Well, LJ told everyone to close their eyes. <laughs> I listen to podcasts sometimes while I'm running or walking, and I, I'm going to keep, if you're running or walking right now, keep your eyes open. You, you know. know what? Listeners, keep your eyes open. <laughs> Just <laughs> listeners, keep your eyes open. But Dad and Kevin, uh, imagine a red star, okay? All right. All right, now take note of what you're like, saying. Like a star, like you draw no, a star? No, like no, a star no, I'm not answering sky. questions. Okay, I'm not okay. answering questions. I'm asking you a question. Okay. You are imagining a red star. Take yep. note of what you're saying, okay? All right. Okay. Now open your eyes. Kevin, explain what you saw. I saw like a red star like you would draw, like, kind of like a cowboy star, but red. Like, like a five-pointed star paper. that's colored yeah. red. Yeah. All right, Pops, what I actually you watched myself draw it in a red marker and then colored it in. Fantastic. Oh, I saw yeah, that's worth like, a lot, actually. I saw like a like a sun, you know, like a red star in the galaxy. Super is, interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's ball. It has like a has like yeah. the shapes coming out. So I saw like I saw a, kind a, of a rays. star over to my right is what I saw. Just a red oh, star. Oh, that's so interesting. Okay, so uh what I see when I do this exercise is just the inside of my eyelids. I see nothing. Wait a minute. I have this thing yeah, I have this thing called aphantasia I found out recently. That means that my eyes my mind's eye is dead. It sees nothing. And so when you guys imagine something, I can't, I don't even comprehend how that works. When you Wait, guys so see the thing. So you're saying you can't close your eyes. your eyes and imagine something? Like you don't. Correct. Yeah. So what we'll do is Hannah and I, like we've been exercising this a lot because I found out that apparently I'm broken. And, uh, and so I'll ask her to like imagine an apple. And then she's able to like turn it around and count like the nubs on the bottom. And then she's able to cut it in half and see how many seeds are on the inside. And I can't even comprehend. I've spent my entire life wondering why, like when you sit in a circle and then your teacher says, like, close your eyes and imagine a field, you're running in a field now relax. And I just assumed that this was an exercise on loneliness and being in a dark room by yourself with the only voice being someone talking about nice things. Like I've, I'm unable to see what you guys are seeing in any way. You can't, so you can't close your eyes right now and picture an apple. Absolutely not. I can tell you what an apple should look like. I can tell you the platonic ideal of an apple. I well, can tell you that it is red, I can, but like I can't imagine an apple. Kevin, close your eyes. Imagine an apple. Yeah. What color is it? It's red. All right. Uh, does it have a stem on it? Yes, it does. It's actually, does I'm, it I'm a, looking at a honeycrisp apple to be specific. So it's kind of pinkish, greenish, or, yeah, well, but it's more red really than greenish, those. But, but it's got, it's got a little, it's not just it's got like some like kind of spots red. though. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. Uh, does it have a leaf on it, on the stem? No, no, no leaf. Uh, how many nubs does it have on the bottom? Uh, well, I was kind of looking at it like it's in my hand. The bottom's in my hand. I'd have to, uh, four. If you cut it in half, cut it in half. Yep. All right. What cut it in half? What? What cut it in half? Um, a knife. So, but was the knife hold by, held by anything or did a knife just appear and cut it? Yeah. Just, this uh, is, yeah. Just cut it in half. Yeah. This I is mean, insanity to me. I can't even tell you that that makes no sense to me. You tell me, you tell me to cut the apple in half and I just imagine, Without seeing anything, what an apple should look like cut open. Like I have like this time Wikipedia out, article how in my do you, brain. Wait, wait. How do you even know you have this? I mean, how? Who told you? I mean, I, well, I don't because, know. If no, tell me to imagine a star. Well, tell I'm just to, saying yes, it is. But when you, but I when can't you were telling this, when you were telling him to describe the apple, I think you asked a question like, "Well, do you see this?" So you said, 
if if you say if you ask Kevin, did he see this? You're seeing something. You know what I'm saying? No. You, while I'm telling him, I'm seeing the thing. What did you, I wish I remember what you said. I thought you said, do you see? Do you see a stem? Said like, you yeah. said, do you see a stem? For you to ask that question, Kevin, you. I mean, LJ, you have to see an apple with a stem on it, right? You Bullshit. have to. No, no. I just know apples have stems a lot. I think that's the thing. That's the weird thing about this is like, it turns out that I think my brain works completely different than the two of yours. Well, and, I think that's true. That, that's the yeah, truth. I think that's always said. been true. And maybe that <laughs> explains why I'm the shit that I am. Um, but, but I think like for me, I, I, I have like a list in mind of like what is the right answer for what an apple looks like. Well, maybe so we do too. Picture. I don't know. Maybe. Well, but I think I- you imagine whatever apple feels right to you right now. Um, and, and I think that I don't, I don't picture an apple. Um, I mean, How can I can we tell prove you- that? How can we prove that? I don't think. Well, you can, can you close your eyes like and see an apple? Blind thing. Yeah, but if you if you close your eyes and you and you said, "Do I see a stem?" You obviously have an idea of what an apple's supposed to look like. So if I've got what an idea of what an apple's supposed to look like, that's the same thing as seeing an apple when my eyes are closed, isn't it? I mean, yeah, I but mean, I don't maybe see I'm- anything. Can you like? Can you can you see something with your eyes closed? I saw the red star. I saw the red star. I over can't to the right. see anything. I see blackness. I see. The, the light bleeding in from where it burned into my well, eyes. I, mean, I see little I don't know that literally I can see anything. Literally, I'm not seeing anything but, but darkness. But literally. I have an imagination. Like I but my imagination is But you seeing, can pull this visual. You can pull this visual out into that So it's that an blackness. imagination thing, though, because literally I, yeah, I am not seeing anything. That's, that's a fact. Right, but, well, of course, yeah, your eyeballs are not picking up anything, but your brain can put that apple into that black space. Am I correct? I think so. Yes. And you're saying yours can't. Correct. I'm saying that mine cannot create that. Um, I cannot visualize it. I cannot see it. I have no idea what that apple sh- it looks like when I imagine it. I can tell you what an apple's supposed to look like. I can draw what an apple's supposed to look like, but I can't, I can't see it. I'm doing it all off of uh, a yeah, platonic ideal of an apple. I guess there's no way to prove that. I don't know how to prove that because if you told me to draw a, an orange, if you told me to yeah. draw an orange... I'm using the picture I have in my imagination. I don't have an orange in front of me, but I sure. think I could draw an orange or an apple, you know, and be what, semi close. And what I'm doing, okay, so so what I'm doing is I'm saying I know oranges are supposed to be round, so I'm going to start with a circle. And then I know oranges tend to have little pores in them. Yeah. And so I, you know, I kind of draw little grooves up in there. And then I think what color is an orange? Well, they they're supposed to be kind of an orangish yellow. But I wonder um, if I'm doing the same thing. That's what I don't how do well, I, know? I don't know? Because because I'll tell you when I first heard this concept, it was someone told me to imagine the star, and I imagined a five pointed star that was red. I didn't see anything though. I they 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 asked me to open my eyes. I looked at said star, and I said that I think I see the one that has the the red star drawn in. It. And I'll show you. I'll we'll put this little test on the website. The the image that you're supposed to see in like a one through six of like whether or not you get there. Um, and, and I'll tell you that I saw nothing. I, I, I couldn't conjure the color red in my mind's eye. I couldn't conjure a five shaped, a uh, five pointed star. I couldn't conjure a sun. I couldn't what? conjure. I just know what I think he's asking for. And I could draw that. I, you know what I mean? What you're saying now may, it leads me to believe that you probably have a point because when I, when you asked me to see a red star, I'm telling you, I saw it at like one thirty. You know, one to two well, o'clock. I mean, that's literally. Well, that's I close yeah, my so that's eyes, the thing I that really sells me on you guys having a different situation. Than maybe me, you're right. Is yeah. like you said it was at a specific point, a distance away. Kevin also said that he drew it and then filled it in. That is crazy to me. That absolutely makes no sense to me because I can't even start with any of it. I can't. I can't get there. I have no idea what you guys are seeing. But so, like, all right. Close your eyes and think back to the time you saw the the Broncos win the Super Bowl. Okay. Are you seeing it? Nope. I know that. But you're uh, thinking John about Mo- it, so you're seeing it. You're not literally seeing it. No. Like we're not literally seeing it. But you can't see know, John Elway do figured- that flip in the air. You can't. I, you close your eyes. You cannot see John Elway do that flip in the air in your mind. No. I know. I mean, I can see I it. In my mind it. I can describe it to you. And that's so one of the things we talked about is is uh, <laughs> Hannah and I have been arguing about this for a long time because apparently, uh, yeah, of course, we are. But uh, but like three to five percent of the population is like me in the situation. Right. Uh, it's a it's a small group, but but a notable group of people that are like me. And so Hannah and I have been discussing what that means. And and we've been talking about how, like, maybe this is why I'm so much better at like math and geometry than she is, because instead of 
relying on my mag- imagination to draw a hexagon and then rotate it and fit it into this puzzle in the right way or whatever. My brain is relying on a list of rules that it has to follow because otherwise it doesn't fit. So like in a sense, I've got this like sort of memorization of like everything that I can imagine. And then if it's outside of those limits, I know I can't do it very quickly. Does that make sense? Whereas Hannah might imagine something and then twist it around to see the backside of it and it breaks all the rules, but she wouldn't know it. So like maybe this helps me in some ways understand the world around me in a very different way than you guys do. And maybe gives me some sort of advantages and stuff like that. Because I think it's fair to say that like uh, we think differently. You know, I think differently than you guys. I, I wouldn't say like wildly, but I do. I feel like that would <laughs> make it easy. Have you, ever, have you ever meditated, LJ? I've tried and it's useless. See, I would think you'd be really good at meditating because they try to tell you to, to, to see not nothing. picture Just, anything. Yeah, they tell you to oh, see Oh, well, nothing. I can do. Okay. No, then I, maybe I haven't tried to officially meditate because I've done the things where they're like, Maybe the, the, the preschool you've done, version you've done the of things meditation. where it's like you have a box and you drop something in it and then it's gone forever type of things where yeah. I'm talking about the and that ones means where nothing it's like, to me. yeah, maybe. Okay. So maybe I should try real meditation because I, I guess I haven't because I've done the I things where they like technically real. I think it's just well, a I don't either. Form. Yeah. Well, I should try that form because I feel like I've tried the form where they try to use my mind's eye to create things. And that's all I've ever really done in meditation. And I've always thought that everybody was sitting around picturing things the same way I did, right? Like I always assumed that we were all just sitting there looking at the inside of our eyelids and just kind of trying to understand what a field felt like with the wind blowing on our face, but not seeing or feeling said things. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And so like what the recent meditation that I've done or I've tried where it, it, it tries to get you to like listen to surroundings and listen to things around you and then start feeling the, the chair that you're sitting on and start really noticing where your body comes. Oh, in see, I feel like it. I'd be really good at that. And it starts to do, do that. And it slowly gets to a point where, cause like right at first I hear things and it's like, you take note of what you're hearing and slowly, but surely you drift out and now you're not thinking anything. You're just completely blank. And you, even if you spend one to two to five minutes, whatever, that one or that five minutes where you're not thinking about anything, it kind of like almost like a hard reset for your brain a little bit. I could just get you a time to See, just let go. That of sounds like I feel like I do that daily on accident. Like that feels really like as you're describing that, that none of that feels unusual to me in any way. I don't it's know. Maybe I'll to get to like a point where I'm not thinking, to, you know, it's hard. For, I'm me always, too. Me I'm going to at least yes. be thinking about what I need to do next or, or when I need to set my alarm or I need to get some sleep or, you know, something I'm always. See, that's funny because like I, I'll find myself sometimes missing like a minute of my life because a train drove by and then I just lost everything. You were lost in sense? thought. You were just lost. Yeah. yeah. Well, not even lost in thought, just gone. Just like I left for a second and then I came back and found myself still sitting where I was, which was surprising to me. Like I, I was wondering why I didn't move or. You know what I mean? Uh, like, yeah. In a completely sober mind, I want to be clear. This is not like, well, no, is it experimenting? Isn't or, that like deja vu? Is is they, they? I've heard them explain deja vu is where you think you've been in this situation before, but that yeah. like you're sitting on the train and you actually are gone for a minute. Maybe you even black out for a micro amount of time. Sure. And then you wake up and you're in the same train and you're thinking, oh, I've been here before. And yeah, you have. You were here like two tenths of a second ago, but you blacked out for just a minute yeah. or something like that. I've heard that's what deja vu yeah. could that be. That makes sense to me. I mean, yeah, that um, definitely makes sense to me. I've heard deja vu is yeah. Something like that too. So that, that makes a lot of sense. To when me. the other thing you talk about seeing, I've always wondered, and I think we've talked about this before is like, when you say the color red, you said a red star, red has yeah. a, a certain color to me, but if I could look yeah. through your eyes, it might be green. What, right. what I would right. see through your eyes is green. You call red. You know, right. And how do right. we know that? There's no way to know that pink may be Kevin's black, but that's all he knows is that that color right. represents pink. And I don't know how we, right. I, I think Absolutely. that's something we'll never know. Well, so this thing, I don't know if I mentioned is called, uh, that we've been talking about is aphantasia, which is where you have the inability to imagine, uh, an image and, and actually like project it in your mind. Um, and fantasia would be the ability to do so. Aphantasia is like the lack thereof. And, uh, and so just on a, on a kind of final thought of like how I feel like I can confirm to you guys that this is a difference that I'm dealing with is I can still like do some imaging in my dreams, but not often. Only sometimes do I come away with like a tangible image that I can like, uh, that lingers with me for even, I mean, it's only for like minutes 
but it lingers with me. And I don't know if you guys remember, but I used to read dad. You'll definitely remember. I love this book. The, uh, what was it? It was uh, scary stories and unusual facts that readers oh, digest yeah. book. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if you know, the reason I used to read it is because I used to love reading the scary stories because they would give me nightmares. And there was a point in my life where nightmares were something that I was really excited about because I think those were some of the only visual dreams that stuck with me for mm-hmm. any amount of time, because I think this was the only time I was seeing the lens of how you guys just, when you close your eyes, when you see the world. So, huh. yeah. Wow. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Hey, so uh, I, this is kind of switching gears on you guys a little bit. I wanted to to bring this up to you guys just because I found it completely fascinating. I felt like you guys would too, but please. There, there's an island in Norway. I know we talked about uh, uh, time change and and like daylight savings and different <laughs> stuff like that. There's an island in Norway that wants to go time free. They want to yeah. have no such thing as time. And the reason for it is because on this island they have uh, where the sun is up for 69 days straight and it's down for 69 days straight at different parts in the season. So the islanders say that by going time free or time zone free. They can have more flexible school and working hours to make the most of their long summer days and long summer nights. What just hearing that, what what does your mind think, L? So you said that time free could give them more flexible hours, and that is already a contradiction to me, right? Because like, what is a more flexible hour? And then like who has to be up at the school twenty four seven, right? Like there's gotta be some limit to what is time. Like I'm all about it. Like give me give me a world where I don't have to wake up at you know, 7 a.m. to get to work on time and, and I get home at a specific time and I got to go to bed at a specific time. Give me a world where I, as long as I get the work done in a week, I'm happy. But I, like flexible school hours still requires you to show up at some point and someone be there. And how do we know that someone's going to be there? I feel like it's, and I don't know for sure, but I feel like maybe it's a thing where you have to get so many hours of school, not days of school. So maybe they get a ton in in those 69 days where it's maybe dark and they I can actually that, spend I'm the, saying, the, like, the how do the teachers light, know actually. how to show up? You know, how do they know that well, there's got to be schedules? There's got to be schedules made and right, schedules work. Be some sort of time scale. And you're, to you know, know that you're LJ, you're probably a little more of a night owl than, than I am, but yeah. that suits your schedule. So you would work that shift. I would work, you know, more of the day shift, right. In this, Sure, but we're school. still working shifts. You still go home at some point, right? And and well, yeah, you still got to know what time to show up. Yeah, right. Um, exactly. I want to make sure that I show up before you leave. Or also, else how would you schedule appointments, like doctor appointments, dentist appointments? Well, and, and I think that there is like a world where everything is walk in, right? And and if nobody's there, then nobody's there, and you just whatever, like. I think that that could exist in in a world, especially I. It took me a little bit because you told us about this this island, and I saw that dozens of people signed this uh, this petition to go time free, which was hilarious to me because I imagine dozens of people in all of Norway wanting to do this thing. Um, and I looked up the island; only has like three hundred people or something like that, so it only really has dozens of people times like two or so. And uh, so. So if the whole island or is wanting this, like then you don't even have to pass legislation. Just Let stop saying it. these are my hours. Yeah. Just say come in and see if I'm here. And if people are pissed off about it, then that's the whole culture saying that's not a good idea. Like that's how that's how capitalism works, right? Technically. Hmm. Well, Kevin, I have a question to ask. Does okay. anybody really know what time it is? Does anybody Ooh. really care? I mean, time is nothing yes. but a flat circle. It's, it's you know. Yeah. I mean, Chicago wrote that song, you know, but it's like (laughs) there was a time in my life I didn't wear a watch because I thought I kind of want to get away from time. Now, I think y'all just made some very valid points. You have to set a point. I mean, I want to be able to know when I go to my doctor or my dentist, I can, you know, I'm not going to go and wait. They're going to be there and they're going to be be there and they're going to be waiting for me. That that, that's conducive to uh, the interaction of life and keeping it economical, if you will. But I do like. The idea of of us having less to do with time. I mean, what? Who well, decided that two a.m. is the time to sleep? I mean, who decided that? One of the residents. You know, well, it's said not that part of this. It's not is necessarily. The idea is I don't. Part of their idea is to chill out, and he says that he's seen people suffering from stress because they're oppressed by time. You need to be here by this time, or you need to go to sleep by this time. And he's saying time free would allow to get rid of some of that stress where you're always pressed by time. But that, 
has to be a personal decision. Like I love that. I love that mindset. I think that's fantastic, but that has to be a personal decision to make that work. Like um, you can't just say, well, we need somebody at the bank uh, for an entire 69 days straight just to make sure that if somebody needed to come in and, and, uh, and make uh, and get some checks that they'd be able to do that. Like that, that it's a personal decision to say that I'm not, I, I don't care what time it is. And, and usually you have to have some means to get to that point. And, uh, so it, that's just not the way that a uh, society can function. So I want, I want the bank to be open whenever the hell I want to go there, which means somebody's got to keep up with time and schedules, right? Somebody. Yeah, well, has. And, and I they, want it not to apply to me, but to everybody else, I guess is selfishly. Yeah. And what they mentioned but I think is like going there is some the like relevance to a world where maybe we just like, we don't get pissed off if the bank is closed when we go there and we just go back in 45 minutes or six hours or, you know, tomorrow when we wake up or sleeping. Yeah. The whatever. next, the next daytime and, period, you know, and whatever we just don't is. stress out. And part of it is because we always try to do everything at the last minute. I think that's like, and I don't know how Norway is. It's definitely a very American thing where we want to get everything done the day of the deadline. And, uh, and so if we stopped doing that so much and just did things when we did things, um, and, and maybe even just cut the idea of like, uh, deadlines, then to some degree we'd be happier. I mean, obviously landlords need a deadline, right? You got to pay them by a certain amount or you're not paying for the place that you're living in. But your utility uh, companies have a deadline, you know, you better pay. Right, every, exactly. You know, and so that's yeah. what like, maybe, maybe you like kind of give like, I think again, I think it's like an almost like Buddhist, like psychological thing where you create your own deadlines and, and your deadlines are actually like maybe a month before, and then you don't have to stress so much about them. Right? So is like, this island going to go without time? Is that do they get well, to do it, Kevin? So so as LJ was saying, they've got seventy thousand or not? What, how, what was the number? They have a bunch of signatures. That the population of the island, I believe, is three hundred and fifty people. Yeah, and they said they had dozens of signatures. Which I also had a question of how many? What is the highest number you can call dozens? I was just curious about what you guys think that is. Probably. Three, four dozens. I mean, forty-eight people. I mean, see, I was thinking it was one hundred and forty-four. After one hundred, I guess twelve you can't dozens, dozens yeah. anymore. Yeah, yeah. a gross okay. is all the dozens you can count. Yeah, I agree with you there. Thought, yeah, yeah. Well, and it, it, kind of part of what it's, they were saying was going off the clock. It's a baker's it, it's a, dozens. <laughs> <laughs> they said it's it's a, it's a great solution, but there's gross. no way to become entirely a time free zone for the for the same reason you guys are talking about. But I think the reason for this for this such such a crazy thing like the time free is that the uh, the resident says that they just they want to get the time element put on their agenda because they just don't they don't think they're flexible enough because right now there's as we mentioned months where they don't see any daylight. Well, and- yeah, I think that's a fair thing. That makes a lot of sense. Is that you you're basically saying to your government and to your bankers and to your landlords like, hey, I haven't seen the sun in 68 days. Maybe cut me some slack on being five minutes late. You know, just chill out because yeah. none of this makes sense. My melatonin isn't working. Like the way humans work requires sun to come up. Well, and, we and that's it, what so chill. I can't even imagine living on this island because I was reading something about daylight savings time and how like in the yeah. summer where it, where it stays light outside past eight or whatever. I was listening to a, like a, a sleep expert talk about how your body has to now adjust to that because it releases melatonin differently than it did before because of the light difference and what you're seeing. Yeah. Just think about the complete contrast from going no dark oh. at all. It just blows my to mind. All dark. dark completely. It just yeah. is crazy to me. Yeah. And that I don't was think I'd like to it. me as the uh, time free. Yeah, I don't think I would. A, a part of me thought that'd be so cool to have six nine days straight of summer or of of sun, but also it'd be hard to sleep. I don't know. I don't well, think I think, like it I think LJ, you kind of hit on it. I think we, we humans, I think it's instinctual or it's part of our being that we kind of have a circadian rhythm, right? I mean, yeah, we, we do. do. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. We need yeah. routine. There is some routine that we, we, that, that suits us well. And so 69 days of daylight would be difficult to deal with. You just, yeah. That's well, why, and, that's and why I, to, to play into that, I think if anybody knows me, they'd be uh, surprised if I knew what, uh, what eight o'clock in the morning looks like. Um, however, Hannah's been waking up at like, you know, six thirty every morning for like three weeks. And now I do too. Like, it's just because I've gotten into the rhythm, you don't get out of it. Like it just happens. And part of it is because my brain knows we're not setting alarms. It's just the sun is up at the right distance. And my brain knows to wake up at that time. You know, you, you teach yourself that that's what you're so, looking for. So I have a question for you guys. I'm going to ask you first, LJ, and then you answer that. But what is midday to you, LJ? Like a time. Uh, when does that's morning in and midday start? Um, 
So, okay. So midday, I would count like three o'clock, but like to some degree, I would even go later because like my, my day, my time is like, is all in one block of awake or asleep. So midday in like my brain is like halfway in between awake and asleep, which would usually be something like six o'clock. But so hmm. the morning but midday is like six p.m. Like, that means- you're saying six p.m. is midday yeah. to you. OK, I, yeah. It's, but but I'm but I'm saying that that's like a very LJ specific thing. If someone says meet me midday, I think I'm trying to meet them around two or three o'clock. When does does, does that mean the morning ends at two? When does the morning? Yeah, end? that's that. Well, and I understand that that like noon is is like lunchtime, right? right. But it's not to me, um, and and so, but I think it's not to like my people, right? It's not to theater people, is because most of the people I know sleep until ten o'clock. They're just out working until four thirty. You know what I mean? What about so, you, pops? Well, uh, I think I'm I'm in line with LJ, but a little earlier. I, you know, if if I had my druthers, I'd probably get up about six o'clock every day because um, I love I love seeing the morning. No, I love the morning coming alive. I love the sun coming up and seeing it brighter outside. There's something beautiful to see in the day awaken to me that that really is cool to me. But so, you know, 1230. I mean, I know noon would be typically midday, but I would go probably 1230 because I, tr- I tend to eat lunch sometime or between uh, 1215, 1230 is when I'm thinking, I, oh, it's time to go get some lunch, you know. So I'm, I'm a hair after the early risers, I guess, and I'm a little before LJ, which is probably about suitable to, to yeah. you know, our personalities and where we are in life, yeah. I think. Yeah, because I'm, I'm thinking like you can't say midday like 15 minutes after I wake up. So it can't be like 1130. You know what I mean? Which is like when I to like me, to me, I, I feel like midday has to be like 11 a.m. or 1130 because that's when more I just kind of calculate is when morning ends. And I, I, I could see someone saying midday is like 10 a.m. to two, but I still think of in my head 10 a.m. still morning to me. I don't know why, but it's just still more. Well, I mean, literally, eleven fifty nine a.m. is the last day, the last part of morning, right? And literally, twelve oh one p.m. is afternoon. I mean, that's that's literally how think, it is. Okay, and I, I mean, I'm I okay think, with that. So we started with LJ being Mister Literal, and now Pops. I think to some degree, you know, though, yes. I think like you're saying, yeah, twelve oh one is afternoon. That's a fact because that word means afternoon. But what does morning mean? What does the word morning mean? To me, it means a.m. It means the a.m. Well, at so 12.01 yes. a.m., midnight 01 is morning. It's now morning at 12.01 a.m. Uh, I think, and maybe, I don't know if dictionarily it's different, but to me, it's more ethereal as like, you know, first half of day wake up time. And so I feel like morning is a much less literal time than afternoon. Does that make sense to you? Uh, no, say that again. I don't know. Say that again. I'm saying that that morning to me does a afternoon. You can look at the words and understand that it, like it requires noon to be defined, which is twelve o'clock, and yes. then it's after right, that. right. Whereas morning is yes. it doesn't have that same literal uh, definition in the name definition. And so maybe dictionarily it says that morning means eleven fifty nine or before, but to me it means that section of time where coffee is helping me get through the day where I've eaten breakfast for the first time. And so morning to me is a little bit dependent on uh, my own internal uh, schedule. schedule. Yeah. Your own circadian right, rhythm. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's, it's, it's more personal and psychological than afternoon is. Whereas like uh, if you ask me when lunchtime is lunchtime isn't required to be around noon. Right. And so I, I feel like morning works the same way for me is all I'm saying is like uh, literal morning yeah, is more okay. about the person. And that's why I'm surprised to say Kevin Hear Kevin say morning is at eleven thirty when he is, you know, when he works. He's all falling that. asleep for the first time well, all day, right then. Yeah, but I I don't look at my morning the same. I I don't look at my time as a, I don't. See, I can't even label. And I think that's my the funny time. thing is like I'm just broken enough to where I say no, the day should shift to me, and you're broken enough to where you say I don't care. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like I know I go to sleep in the right. morning and I wake up at right. night. Like there's I there's no way I'm going to try to right. say the morning is. 8 p.m. Whereas, like, it's funny because it's all perspective. Like, I stay up sometimes so late working on stuff that I start hearing all of the birds chirping, right? And I'm like, oh, man, it is so laid out. I should go to bed. When in reality, to a lot of people, they'd say it's "It's so early out. I can't believe you're still awake. Um, But I think think that that, to me, is is very psychological, personal, inward. I don't know. Just found it interesting, and I thought about it when I had this time-free thing. I thought, well, I, I guess they'll have to have some kind of labels or something. Who knows? I would like to see the study on that island and see how that goes. I hope they go time free love and it. we can I see. Well, see. I mean, how, how did they do doctor's appointments? Yeah. How did they go to the movies? I mean, you know, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. 
mean, maybe, if it's 350 maybe people, can... maybe all they do is grow crops and, well, and go and home. I, I don't know. Maybe the thing is, right, if you lived on this island, then instead of going to the movies and saying, well, the Avengers starts at 1215, you just go to the movies and say, oh, the Avengers start again in 45 minutes. Do you guys want to hang around and see it? The same way you go to Chili's, right? And and just you see what time you're going to get your table. Maybe that's the answer for like all these hmm. things. Yeah, you just go to the, you go to the hospital or go to the doctor, and he says, "I can see you in three hours." And you decide, "Okay, well then I'm going to leave." Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Says, I or, can well, see you in or what about if minutes? I say I will leave and come back in three hours? Can I do well, that? So that's you know, interesting, right? Because that requires if you, time. If you don't have now a central clock, then you're just looking at your watch to see what was three hours. And is that? Ba- but I guess maybe the thing is that's not based on whether <clears> it's midnight or not. So maybe that's still kind of. Helps them figure out, like, helps them deal with this, like, lack of time and people can be lazier thing. Not lazier, but they can be less pressured to finish by a, a certain uh, worldwide clock time. They're not as pressured to finish mm-hmm. banking times at 5 p.m. They're just pressured to finish it by the time their customers need them to finish it. You know what I mean? And so they're not looking at, is it 5 p.m., but they're looking, is it three hours after I told them that it would take me three hours? You know? And I think there's a psychological wow. difference there. Mm. I think I like having time. I mean, I, I yeah, agree, but I think since we discussed it, it, I like having. But but yeah, no, I do. Time. I agree completely. Yes, but does anybody really know? <laughs> what time it is? All right. Well, I think really we care? will start wrapping this bad boy up. Unless you guys got anything we else, finish y'all wrapping throw this bad boy up soon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we need to we need to put a bow on it, big boy. Watch women's soccer. Y'all want to throw what we're listening to before we get out of here? Uh, sure. What do you want to do? I what? said watch women's soccer. What's what we're listening to? Just kind of a quick. I mean, I could do one real quick, but it's maybe a retread. But I can damn sure do it. Hit it. What you got? Avid Brothers. I've been listening to the Avid Brothers, the uh, the morning song and that album, uh, the Magpie and the Dandelion. It's a great album. It's just been it popped up. Been listening to it. Love it. Huh. Good answer. There we go. Elle, what about you? Uh, I've been listening to our Masterclass Episode 2 uh, playlist to try to get into what the world was like before Led Zeppelin's second album. So uh, it's been pretty good so far, but uh, I got to give it a deeper dive. So I've been listening to some of that too. Yep, yep. And I've been listening to, and it's been before, but it's just more recently because Chance the Rapper Ooh. has put on, he put on uh, Acid Rap and 10 Day are both been added to Spotify oh, now. Oh, boy. So you can listen That's, to those mixtapes on Spotify. There goes my time. And just another reason why I love Chance the Rapper so much. There was one of the songs on there on Acid Rap that he couldn't get on to, uh, he couldn't get on to Spotify for a different reason. Like, he, cause he wanted to, he, he already, he announced that he was going to have them up by midnight on Thursday. So that as soon as Friday started, they were going to be on yeah. there. And one of the songs he couldn't get up in time. So instead he put the, the song on there and it's just him talking for 25 seconds and he explains how, why he couldn't get on. And then he goes, but, for every dollar, because each song gets so much money for streaming yeah. rights on Spotify. Yeah. So he said, all the money this song raises, please, when you listen to this album, still listen to this song fully. And every time this one gets one full play, that money will go to some sort of public works in Chicago. Oh, so well, that's about to be on repeat. That's just really, yeah, Chance. So like literally at the end of it, he goes, and if you would replay this song one time, just go listen to it one more time. Just don't skip it. And so it was just so cool. Like I was like, that's really chance always finds something really cool to do, even on a situation where it was like, that might have been someone's favorite song, but still you're like, oh well, it's still my boy. He chance. really is that's a hero cool. in Chicago so. in that sense. He's he's one of the most uh publicly active activists that I've seen in modern times. He's so good to his people. He seems like a I good just, guy with a good heart. I mean he really does. Yeah. I like him. So that, that, that'll do it for this week's episode. Uh, you can find show notes and more over on our website at jpppod.com, or you can find us on Facebook or Twitter. We will be back with some more for you next week. But for now, enjoy your July 4th and July 4th weekend. Guys, I'll see y'all in just a little bit. Peace. Peace, Peace out. out.